Importance of resource status keeping on an incident, the effective management of tactical resources is a vital consideration. The ability to select the right resource for the task to be done is essential to properly accomplish a job, ensure resource safety, and be cost effective. Maintaining status of all resources assigned to the incident is an important aspect of resource management. A tactical resource, such as a helicopter, will have a variety of capabilities and uses. It is obvious not enough to just order a helicopter. For this reason, it is strongly recommended that the various kinds of resources used within ICS be typed whenever possible. In addition, not all tactical resources at an incident may be usable at any given time. For a variety of reasons, some resources may be temporarily out of service or placed into an available, ready, but not assigned status. Definitions of resources. In the ICS application, tactical resources consist of all personnel and major items of equipment available for potentially and be available for assignments to incidences. Equipment resources will include the personnel required to operate and staff them. The kinds of resources describes what the resource is. Examples patrol vehicle, helicopter, fire engine, oil skimmer vessel, bulldozer, plows, etc. The kinds of resources can be as broad as necessary for to suit the incident application. Some of the same kinds of tactical resources may be used by different agencies on a wide variety of incidences. For example, both police and fire departments will often use helicopters, fuel tenders, and crew transports. Other kinds of resources, patrol vehicles, search dogs, or fire engines are specific to the user's agency and to the applicational area. The types of resources describe the performance capability for the kind of resource. For example, in California Fire Service Field Operating Guide, a Type 1 helicopter will carry up to 16 persons, where a Type 3 helicopter will carry up to 5. Resources are usually typed by number, with 1 being the highest, 2 being the next highest. However, a higher capacity does not necessarily mean it is the right resource for the job. An example of this would be a Type 1 engine, which has the highest pumping capacity, but cannot make access to the rough terrain of a wildland fire. Specific capabilities of resources must always be clearly spelled out in the type of description. There are three distinct advantages to typing resources. In planning, knowing the specific capability of the various kinds of resources helps planners decide the type and quantity of resources best suited to perform activities required by the Incident Action Plan. In ordering, ordering resources by type saves time, minimizes error, gives a clear indication of exactly what is needed, and reduces the non essential communication between the incident and the off-site ordering point. In monitoring, resources use an awareness of type of tactical resource assignments enables the manager to monitor for under or over capability and make changes accordingly. Careful monitoring of resource performance can lead to the use of smaller or less costly resources, which can result in increased work performance and reduced cost. While resources typing is a good idea, there are only a few typing standards currently available nationally, and these are primarily in the wildland service. Typing is recommended as a goal for the future for law enforcement, public works, water utilities, and other agencies who consistently deploy special kinds of resources. At a minimum, there should be a standard typing system on a statewide basis to facilitate ordering of mutual aid equipment. There are three ways of using resources on an incident. A single resource, a task force, a strike team, squad, platoons. Each of these has certain features. Single resources are individual pieces of equipment, a crew of individuals with an identified work supervisor that can be used in tactical applications on an incident. A single resource is often the most common way of initially using resources on the incident. Single resources can be typed to reflect capability. Unless a single resource is typed, its specific resource capability may not be clear to everyone. Some examples are police motorcycle unit, fire engine company, medical team, 
helicopter, search dogs. Task forces are any combination and number of single resources within the span of patrol limits assembled for a particular tactical need. Task forces may be mixed of all different kinds of resources, be of the same kind but different types, or be several resources of one kind mixed with other resources. Requirements for a task force must have a leader, must have communications between resources and the leader, and from the leader to the next level supervisor, must have transportation as required, and must be within the span of control limits. Listed are some examples of how agencies may organize task forces. A public works task force might be two bulldozers, two dump trucks. A fire task force may be two engine, a bulldozer, and two hand crews. A search and rescue task force might be one helicopter, one alpine search and rescue team, and one medical technician. An oil spill task force might be five breathing food ships, 10 work boats, one tank barge, and four skimming vessels. Law enforcement task force would be one SWAT team, one K-19, one fire engine, and one ambulance. A multi-agency task force might be two patrol vehicles, five engines, and three medical units.